There we are. Morning, everyone. How are you? I hope you're doing great. Um, we're so excited to have you here on our last day. We made it. We made it to Friday. Oh, goodness gracious. Anybody else tired? <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling tired, but uh, that's why we continue to come back to breath and start with the body, which we'll do today. So um, moving on, I just want to acknowledge all of our partners. Um, by now, you've met all of them. It's been an exciting time. From, from the planning standpoint, I'll just say it's been a joy to collaborate and bring minds together and different perspectives together. And it's just a great example of um, the beauty of collaboration. So I hope you've felt that on the other side as well. Um, but it's been really exciting. So uh, again, our digital platforms, as you know, I believe we've touched all of them. If you have questions, please ask any of us. If we don't know, we can put you in touch with the, uh, somebody that does. <laughs> Uh, but it's been exciting and encouraging to explore these, all of these platforms together. Oh, we have a few folks coming in. Here's our schedule for today. So we're going to be spending the morning as we have these past few mornings exploring um, arts integration into social emotional goals. And, um, and then we'll link those to the rest of the content for the rest of the day. I'm, by now, I think you all probably know where you're going. And then we'll loop up back together to finish the day. Um, and try to sew, sew this experience up a bit. Awesome. Today's learning targets and essential questions as we've been starting um, every day, we wanna just make sure we zoom out a bit, pun intended, and, uh, and really hold these questions at the center of everything that we're doing. So do I get to explain and to present my ideas? Am I recognized as being capable and able to contribute in meaningful ways? Um, our social emotional learning core concept for today is responsible decision making. So moving on. So I'm, I'm going to go out of order slightly. We are still gonna, going to do the full brain dance today for our warm up, which I'm really excited about. But we're going to um, connect it a little bit more to our, our content and our um, curricular objectives that we have been we've been running after. Um, so I want to frame it for you. For first, uh, the castle definition. Sorry, still letting folks in. So excited, more folks are coming in. Very awesome. Um, so we're we've worked on the first four um, social emotional core concepts. The last one for us today is responsible decision making, and this is all about choices, which we talk. I know we talk to our students and our children about often, that it's all about what choices you make and how you take care of yourself and the people around you, your environment and your community based on your ethical standards, safety concerns, social norms, and the realistic evaluation of your consequences, understanding the, um, what will happen, the cause and effect of what will happen um, because of your choices. So for that, in connecting and thinking about our watershed and thinking about taking care of our environment, I'd like to present you with this idea. So we, uh, I've taken our watershed, I've tipped the marine watershed, I've tipped it on its ear, and we've overlaid Da Vinci's Vitruvian Man on top of it. And so all more, oh, Eileen, thanks. <laughs> and so all morning, or every morning, we have been really focusing on taking care of self, understanding that for us and for our students, especially in these circumstances right now, to be ready to learn, we have to take care of our brains and our bodies and connect them. So to be able to get to uh, effective decision making, we, we know even as adults, we need to have a foundation um, to build upon, to, to stand upon, to make decisions upon. Um, and we've been doing that. We've been connecting to breath. We've been connecting to the development of progression of movement through our, uh, through our brain dance. And all of that makes us ready to intake information and put things out into the world. So if you'll indulge me for a moment, we're going to move through the brain dance and we're going to connect to this idea that our, our taking care of our body is similar to taking care of our watershed and taking care of our community. Um, so we're going to work through the patterns of the brain dance and I'd like you we'll, we'll <laughs> thanks thanks Eileen we're going to come back to this idea um, at the very end of our brain dance and I'm actually geographically going to make some connections 
from our body to our brain dance, and then also in themes and tone as well around tri the, tr the idea of tributaries and water flow. Um, and what I'd like to, what I'd like you to think about in addition to just experiencing this, but also thinking about how brain dance can be used as um, an introduction to lots of content as well. So from just a participant experience, I think this will be really um, metaphorical, if you will, and we can draw lots of connections that way. But then as an educator, brain dance can be used to introduce concepts, vocabulary, and ideas, as well as warm up the brain, brain and the body. So um, let's jump in together now. I'm gonna give us some calming music again. Um, am I able to do that, Kelsey, if you're sharing screen? Yeah, I think I can do that. Give me one moment. Oh, no, I can't. That's okay. We don't, oh, <laughs> okay. All right, one moment. Thanks for bearing with us. I'm going to I'm going to flip the screens, okay? Uh, one moment. All right, there we go. Okay. Oops, give me uh thank you for bearing with me one moment. All right, here we are. All right, so make sure you find some nice space where you are. You can scoot your chair back. Make sure you can feel your sit bones under you. Rock back and forth, side to side, front to back. Really find your stable foundation, sitting up nice and tall, pulling those shoulders up, back, and down. Nice job. We're going to take a big breath in. Exhale. And as you're doing that, keep breathing. Take another deep breath in and exhale again. I'd like you to think about the waves. We've had lots of connection to water. So think about how the waves come in and out. And I'd like you to connect your breath to that visual. So I'm gonna give you a moment. Breathe like the waves. Send those waves down to your toes and up to your head. One more time on your own time. Great. Now we're going to create a rainstorm for our watershed. So thinking about that body, I'd like you to have light rain, just light rain for tactile. So fingertips are coming. You can warm those hands up. I forgot to give you that too. But we're going to do fingertips and think about that ge the geography of the watershed. So starting from the north and the rain comes and trickles down to the south, all the way to our toes. So you're using the sense of touch. Just a light rain right now. And don't forget the back of your watershed as well. Very good. Good. Rain all around. Make sure you're re reaching all geographical areas. So all the way out to the ocean, all the way to the bay, all the way down to Sausalito, all the way up to Petaluma. All right, now the rain's getting heavier. We're having a heavier rainstorm. Our watershed is collecting and absorbing all of that water. Good job. And let's make a pattern out of it. So after, after the nice big heavy rainstorm that's hit the entirety of our watershed, bring it back to that light rain until the storm washes away. Good job. Oh. Nice job, hold on. Ooh. All right, moving on to core distal. So thinking about that watershed, I'd like you to bring all of your tributaries into the center of Marin. So right into the center, those beautiful hills, nice and tight. Now those, that you're gonna stretch all the way out like your legs are the tributaries. You can um, curve them, swish them all the way out to the far reaches of the watershed. 
think about, try to get every tributary, try to flow through every tributary through your core distal reach and bring it all back and let's bring it all back into Lake Lagunita. Good job, nice and tight. Good, and coming back up right into head tail. Good, let's flow like water with our spine. So thinking it all, we've, we've carved out all of those tributaries. Now let your spine flow through them as best you can. Good, nice work. Try to get really into the pelvis. And in between the shoulders, that's always my spot that I have to remind myself. Nice. Good job, coming back to neutral. Upper lower, freezing the lower part of your body shed, of your watershed, dancing with the top part. You can dance however you'd like, but think about those rivers and those tributaries and flowing all the way up to Petaluma. So sending it all the way up towards our northern communities, all the way up, and just keep dancing. Get those fingers going. Try to experience every part of the upper body. You can follow me or you can dance on your own. Good. Bringing the upper body to neutral. Now we're gonna dance on our, the lower part of our watershed. So lower body only, sending toes and feet. Good. Trying to freeze the upper body. Good, coming back to neutral. Good, I'm gonna try to use that music one more time. Now we're gonna do body side. Stretching all, one side all the way to the ocean. Reach, 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 all the way to the ocean. Stinson Beach, Mirror Beach. Oh, and bring it back in. Good, one more time, same side, stretching it all the way out. Good, dance that side of the body for Western Marin. So however you like, same arm, same leg. Take care of our Western Marin watershed, our coast. Good. And back into neutral. Other side, stretching all the way to the bay, all the way to China camp. And back in. One more time. And dance for that side. Same arm, same leg ribs, all the ribs and tributaries, all the ponds, all the creeks. All those families and neighborhoods that live on those watersheds, tributaries, ponds, and creeks right there on that side of the body. Good. Moving on to two new patterns that we haven't done. Cross lateral. I'm going to there we go. Cross lateral. So you're going to make a big X with your body. Cross lateral is, is connecting right to left, upper to lower. So now we really get to integrate our entire watershed. We're going to take one hand. You're going to wave to me with that hand. And we're going to really be that swirling watershed, swirling tributaries as we cross the body down to the, either the opposite knee or the opposite foot. So big cross and then swirl back up all the way back up other side here we go crossing the body good all the way down to the opposite foot and back up so right to left upper to lower picture that on the mat good Explore, experiencing cross lateral on your own however you'd like so what says dance all of our marin watershed by crossing, you're the water on the land. All of that interweaving, map, veins of our watershed that keeps our land healthy, that has those beautiful river otters swimming in. Good. Ooh. Good. Coming back to neutral. The last part of our brain dance is getting dizzy and finding balance. 
to do this in Zoom and in our seats, we're just gonna use our head. We're gonna shake our head vigorously in a moment, but I want you to think about the swirling, swishing water that happens in all of um, our, our lakes, our tributaries, our, our oceans, all of that, how the water swishes and finds its way um, to balance and to balance our, our environment, to balance our community. So we're gonna take our hands right next to our head and I'd like you to, as comfortable as you are, keep your eyes open. We're gonna shake our head vigorously for uh, eight counts and then we'll find balance together. Here we go. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And take the hand to your head, take a big breath in. One more big breath in. Big reach up. Hands together and pull it in. Bring that sun in. Very good. Good. Shake it off. Good. Thank you for indulging me. So as we talked about it, I want to bring this image back up for you to take a look at. We danced the whole watershed. We took care of our body through that. And similarly, I hope we can think about taking care of our watershed and our environment. Thank you, everybody. I'm gonna pass it off to Kelsey now. Good. I'm, I'm getting my music off, Kelsey. Hold on. <laughs> no worries. Um, while she's pulling the music down, I just wanted to let everybody know we will add uh, to the resource list for this, the end of the slide deck, we'll add um, a, Youth and Arts did a series of free videos for various different activities that you can find on our social media platforms. And we did the full brain dance. So if you wanted to bring it back to your classroom, but you feel like you need additional guidance on how to facilitate that, you can access this video. And we also have another video uh, as part of a digital toolkit that we provided last year that explains why the, the different steps of the brain dance are important for the brain. So we'll share both of those at the end of today's slide deck um, for you to access in your own time. And then, okay, can we go to the first slide? Uh, yes, there we go. So the next activity that we're gonna do together, um, I call the found object sculpture challenge. Uh, and two terms that will be important for everybody to keep in mind as we develop this, uh, as we, we do this activity. Um, is ephemeral sculpture and found object sculpture. So to define those very quickly, ephemeral sculpture is um, a sculpture that only lasts for a short period of time. So I have an image up um, by an artist, Martin Hill, who does ephemeral nat natural sculptures, and he uses rock. And you'll see when you go to the beach, you see people stacking rocks. You've probably seen ice sculptures and sand sculptures. These are all, um, these are all examples of ephemeral sculpture. And so one thing that you could pull from this activity are different ways to send your kids out into nature to create their own ephemeral sculptures um, as part of the found object sculpture challenge. And I encourage you to think about that as well while we're doing our activity. The second uh, definition I wanna go over with you guys is found object sculpture. And a found object sculpture is a natural or man-made object or fragment of an object that is found um, usually by an artist and <laughs> kept because of something intrinsic, intrinsically interesting that the artist sees in it. So I have an example here of, um, of a sculpture that's part of uh, an old wagon, but um, there are a few, there are tons of examples online. So if you search found object sculpture, you'll get a lot of different ideas of what that could look like. Um, and both of these definitions, just so you know, were found on Tate.com, um, or Tate.org, sorry, the museum, uh, the Tate Museum has a really great online uh, definitions for various different art terms. So you can get both of those there. Um, many of you, if you are on social media during this, uh, this period of time when we're all, we were all quarantined, there were a lot of people who were taking up museum challenges, which um, are, inherently part of the found object sculpture challenge. So people were recreating famous works of art in museum collections using people and objects that they found at home. And I brought up three really specific examples to show you that this could look like a lot of things. Um, the far right image, um, excellent, yeah. My, the far right image uh, shows an example of how this, this artist, we will call him, 
took a portrait by Van Gogh and um, actually thought about the textures that they, they were seeing, the different textures and the different um, colors and the different images that they were seeing in words um, that, that they pulled in to recreate this image. The image in the middle, um, it's very simple, right? But you still get the, the compositional idea of what this landscape looks like. But it's much simpler version than the one that we see on the right. Um, and then the one on the far left, my far left if you're facing the screen, uh, is a woman who's recreated a sculpture using a vacuum. So again, she's really thinking about form rather than, um, than texture or color. Uh, so there are different ways to approach this. And, and Kristen, you can go to the next screen. And what we're gonna have you guys do is we're gonna break you into paired up uh, breakout rooms and actually do this challenge together. Um, and so I'm gonna post the link uh, to the slides again, just so you can pull the, these directions up to use them as guidance as you, um, you work on your sculptures. But essentially you're gonna spend uh, a very segmented period of time <laughs> putting all of these together. So you're gonna have a partner A and a partner B um, and just determine amongst the two of you which one is gonna be partner A and which one's gonna be partner B. And then, uh, oh, sorry, that was a Google Drive folder. Ignore that. <laughs> um, thank you. <laughs> so determine between the two of you which one's partner A and partner B. Partner A is gonna start um, and then partner B, to start giving directions and partner B is gonna make the artwork and then you're gonna switch. So right now what I'd like you to do is just take a minute to think about your favorite place in nature to visit. And we do want it to be a natural landscape. So think about, close your eyes if it helps, think about your favorite place in nature uh, and pinpoint that location. And I want you to find an image of that online. And you don't have to show it to anyone, just find it and, and have it on your computer. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to do that. And I'm just putting the prompt into, um, uh, into the chat. Okay, so once you've grabbed your image, we're gonna put you in breakout rooms and partner A will be leading partner B through the creation of the recreation of making their image. So you're not showing your image to your partner, it's just for you, but you're gonna use your communication skills and focus on, on concepts like size, shape, color, texture, and location to give directions to your partner to recreate your landscape using objects that they find at home. So this can be as complex or as simple as you want it to be. Um, and, and I'm gonna go over the, the quick definitions of those different key items that I just mentioned. Size being how big something is in the image, like scale. Shape being, you know, squares, circles, triangles. What, uh, what's the overall shape that you want them to recreate? And then uh, color, obviously being what color the particular uh, item in your, your landscape is. So let's say you have a body of water and I would think about that it's medium sized, oval and blue, right? So I would be giving those kinds of directions to my, to my partner. Um, thinking about texture, you could say something like it's, it's, uh, it's water. <laughs> so you could provide a texture and there's knowledge around that texture of water. Um, and then when I say location, I mean where in your, in your image it's located. So if your body of water is right in the middle, then you would say this oval blue shape is right in the middle, it's medium sized, takes up about a third of the, the picture. So really think creatively about what would help you to recreate this and give those directions to your partner. Uh, you will have 13 minutes to create an artwork. And then after those 13 minutes are over, I would like you to pause with your partner and spend two minutes reflecting on what worked and what did not work in terms of giving directions and receiving directions. Um, and then you're gonna switch and partner B will, will direct partner A in creating an artwork of partner B's image. So um, if you can, go ahead and pull up these directions on your, your slides on your computer. 
as we send you to breakout rooms. Um, and the last thing I will mention is that we would like for you to record your artwork in some way. So if you have, um, if you have a, a, a phone, a camera, a computer, just try and snap a quick shot of that. Um, we are able to break you into breakout rooms of two to three right now. So if you have a group of three, try and manage your time within that period or pick two people to go. Um, are there any questions so far about that? Or you guys feel prepared to, to take this challenge on? Yeah? Okay. All right. Happy making. Making sure. Ah, oh, good, Catherine, I'm glad. Making sure everybody is back before we get started again. Um, I'm going to post in the notes the Google folder that I would like everybody to upload your images in. Um, and we'll go over that part together, but if you're just hanging out and you've already done this before, feel free to drop your, your image into that folder. I think we have everybody. I'm gonna share my screen. Now, do you want both um, images in there so you know what it looks like and what it's supposed to be? Yeah, if you have both, that would be great. Um, the, the one that I want you to focus on is the one that you made. But if you do want to put on both of your images, that would be awesome. I appreciate that, Deb. All right. Nice. OK. So if you're just joining us, I put the link to the Google folder for our Making Learning Visible um, folders onto the chat. So if you could drag and drop and or just use the upload button to add your image of your sculpture and also your image of your landscape if you have it into that folder, then um, we will we'll keep it for our, our activities later this afternoon and for posterity. <laughs> And if you guys could just give me a thumbs up or a thumbs up reaction once you have finished that part. Thank you. Well, see, can we, we did it multiple, we did, uh, we had multiple attempts. Uh-huh. Can we upload all three attempts? Yeah, let's do it. Let's look at the, the process of learning. I love it. Okay. And then once you have completed that, again, if you could just do a thumbs up or a thumbs up reaction on your screen. Awesome. <clears throat> so we're just going to do um, a quick reflection on this to tie it into some of the ideas around the social emotional competency of responsible decision making, as well as yesterday's competency of um, uh, relationship skills. So talking about communication. Um, so what I would first like you to do is take a look at your found object sculpture, the one that you created uh, and took a picture of. And my first question for you is how many items did you use to create it? And you can just hold this number in your head or you can add it to the chat. Excuse so me. Gonna, yeah. I'm going to put the prompt here. And it's also in the slide deck and the shared slide screen. <clears throat> All right. Eight, five, five, six, five plus, nine to ten. These are pretty robust sculptures, it sounds like. I'm gonna have to pull up the folder here. Um, and then my second question for you is how many of the items used were recycled items? And when I say recycled, this could be something that you know for a fact was made of recycled plastic, or it could be something that you purchased secondhand if you use something like clothing. Okay, one. 
and you can add this number to the chat. Catherine added four, two, okay. What I would like you to do with both of these numbers is determine the percentage of items you have used in your sculpture that are recycled. So to do that, you'll see up on the slide screen, there's a very basic equation that many of you probably already know. <laughs> I just want you to take the number of uh, recycled items that you used in your sculpture and divide it by the total number of items that were used. Um, and you should get a percentage. And Jordan asks, can it be an item that was meant to be single use, but you are reusing it? Yes, well, we will, we'll count that. <laughs> And then you can add those percentages to the chat. So Kim says 75%. Oh, Sarah got 100%. Sandra says five out of eight, so 63%, 33%, 25%. Awesome. You guys can keep adding those. I'm gonna have you do it again, but I want you to specifically look at the items that, um, that are in your composition that are not recyclable. So you cannot take them and recycle them after they've been used. And please determine the percentage uh, of not recyclable items used in your artwork. And you can post this to the chat. Zero, yes, <laughs> Sandra, that makes sense. <laughs> Floor says zero, nice. Not recycled, 70%. Zero out of four is zero percent recycled. Three fourths, oh, pulling out the, the fractions too. I love it. Willow says 100% recycled. Kim's 50%. Awesome. So, one of the things that, um, that I want to pose to you as a group, and we can do this in chat, but I also encourage you to unmute um, and to, to share your thoughts. I would like you to think about uh, and, and share with the group how you might use this activity to build communication and also to build responsible decision making in your students. Does anyone have any ideas how they might do this? I'm gonna put the prompt in the chat. Willow so has her hand raised. Willow. Can you um, unmute and share with us? Sure. Um, well, I had my second grader as my assistant today. She was actually the lead uh, artist. And she, it was really great to watch the, you know, given the prompt of describe a picture to someone else to see what words she was using. It was interesting, Eileen, to remember our conversation yesterday regarding map skills and using, using words that show where things are in relation to other things. Mm -hmm. um, so that was really cool to watch her do that and to see, you know, she has to describe that the lake is in the bottom half of the rectangle and just all of the language that is required to describe such a thing. And then, of course, her idea to recreate Deb's picture was this beautiful abstract thing. You know, she found an orange towel and then laid rocks on top of it and then found a red milk bottle top to represent the sun. You know, it was wow. totally this beautiful abstraction. She had all the pieces in there, but, you know, it, it could have been in a, in a art Thing. So mm -hmm. just seeing, doing it with a seven-year-old, um, she, was, she was really into it and seeing all of the different processes of input and output um, were, were, I could see doing it really easily. Awesome. Did anyone have a similar experience or um, was there a part that you found specifically helpful for building communication skills that you would take with you to your classroom? Hayun, do you want to say what you shared earlier? Because I know you work with um, students with disabilities and what you said about language, that was really powerful. Um, yes, I think this, this activity um, 
really allow students on the spectrum to use communication to not only express their thoughts um, in terms of directionality, providing clarity um, with emphasis. Um, it also, my students, I also work with uh, students who are in middle school and they're, they're so inclined to say one word, <laughs> minimum, um, you know, as po you know, possible. So it allows them to really, you know, use um, complete thoughts in expressing or describing um, their image, uh, visual image. And it, it, you know, they need to listen, they need to uh, successfully communicate, um, you know, they need to use nonverbal uh, communication, look, you know, make eye contacts, you know, read other people's cues. I think it's, this is great. Excellent. No, it's, that's really good to hear. I think it's um, when you give people a reason to, to work on the communication skills, that's fun. Then, you know, it provides, um, provides one more type of motivation that, that may encourage them. So I appreciate you sharing that. Um, can I? Then, yeah, go ahead, Molly. Can I share it? So um, I was with Whitney and, and both, we didn't quite understand the directions exactly, but we modified them. And I think it actually worked really well where I described my picture to her and then she described her picture to me. So we went off and built at the same time. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So that way when we came back and then we each shared what we had and, but it also, so what, well, well, otherwise I would have been sitting there while she was building, you know, and you know, as from a student standpoint, what would I be doing? So this way it's like, we both had our sketches and our wrote down what each other said and went and built what we heard. And then that way we were both active the whole time. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. So, I mean, ordinarily, <laughs> we, would, we don't do this through Zoom, but um, the, the fact of the matter is that there are probably modifications that will help make this more successful for your kids. So I love that idea. Thank you for sharing that, Molly. And it sounds like it was a good, um, good way to go about it. And then I just wanted to read out a couple of the things in the chat. So Sarah says it helped her to sketch it out first. And then uh, her partner suggested that she shouldn't worry about colors, so that helps her to let go of the feeling like I didn't have the right materials to recreate it. Awesome, so the flexibility and adaptation in the moment. Um, and then Sandra says, Sarah, we drew ours as well, and then added three-dimensional elements. Ooh, I'm excited. Um, and that is actually a, another type of skill building that um, taking a two-dimensional object and turning it into a three-dimensional object that touches on a lot of grade level, uh, grade appropriate and grade level skills in terms of um, especially early grade level learning the difference between two and three dimensional. So that's an excellent uh, addition. And then we have this activity is great for vocabulary development, practice using descriptive language, collaborative project-based learning, smiley face. Um, and then we have, I would want to have the kids create the bag of stuff for creating ahead of time or give them ideas of what to bring that day. I had the bag of stuff ready for the building project that I had to miss, awesome. So uh, how to further provide supports for your specific students, as Hyun was mentioning as well, um, would be to possibly have them start with a select number of items that they can use to create it. Uh, and then Sarah says doing it at the same time would have been better. Yeah, excellent. So we can take that and use it. And then um, Kristen says, great point to Sarah. And especially for ECE in terms of building, pre-building pre um, supply lists. Don says, I think Yen is spot on. The more cause we can create for students to put words together, the more active their engagement with critical thinking and concept development, words equal learning applied. And Kim says, how do I add my pick to the found object sculpture page? I see it in a Google Drive, but I don't know how to add an image of my sculpture. So Kim, um, are you in, you said you're in Google Drive. You should be able to take it, an image on your desktop and just click on it and drag and hold it and click it and drag it into the, um, the folder. Or you can go over to um, the, the new button in the corner, the top left corner, and click on new and you should be able to have an upload option. Um, and that should, that should put, put it in there. You just want to make sure you're in the found objects, object sculpture challenge um, 
folder first. Um, and then really quickly, uh, if there are any additional thoughts you guys have on um, responsible decision making, you can add those to the chat. I know that it's time to, to, to break out for your breaks. Um, one thing that's really great about this project and, and bringing arts integration into the classroom as well is the concept of materiality and what materials we use. So we talked about recycling and recyclable materials um, and thinking about the percentage. You could use it as an activity to think about the percentage of um, recyclable objects you use at any given moment. For older grade levels, you can also think about this in terms of labor exploitation. So if you think about, um, you know, where our clothing comes from, for instance. So um, if you have any additional ideas about how to use this activity to touch on um, responsible decision making, then go ahead and add those to the chat. And Sarah has mentioned recycling, having a talk about things we throw away, reducing, reusing, and recycling. Um, Kristen says, in a private message, but it's meant to be public, make connection to body equals labor equals warm up. Yeah, so she's, she's actually connecting back to the um, activity we did this morning, which was a comparison between the body and the environment and how um, body and the environment also tie into the concept of labor. And Sarah is mentioning patient listening and asking questions of your partner. So how communication skills and relationship skills feed into responsible decision making as well. Excellent. Well, I'm going to hang out. Flora says it reminded her of the scrap paper drawing or drawer I have and reminding students to look at things before they get rid of it. Yeah, that's like the artist motto, right? Is <laughs> using what you have. I think as a, as a student, an art student, I picked up so much stuff from the side of the road that four years. <laughs> um, and so I encourage you guys to hang out and stick around if you have questions about this activity. I will be on for a couple more minutes, but feel free to take your break.